Hello there, my name is Daniel and two years ago I spent my entire life savings on a stone derelict cottage out in the wilds of Western Ireland, um, which is where I am right now. now. It has a footprint of about 45 square meters, um, which is about the size of most people's garage in a modern house, so very very small cottage, um, three rooms, one story, um, and totally decrepit. So the windows are rotten, there, there are holes in the roof, the stone walls are falling down, um, it's in a terrible state. Now the cottage is set on about an acre of land, um, very very fertile, very rich soil, never before farmed, um, always full of life, weeds as high as my head most of the year. And it's surrounded by um, wild meadow and forestry, which is I'm sitting on the edge of right now, um, and cow pasture. And the land and the cottage is at the end of a kilometre long single track dirt lane. Um, very, very difficult to drive down in the summer because the, the weeds get so high that they scrape against the undercarriage of your car, so it, you can't go down there very quick. And the trees come in from the side and kind of enclose you. So it's a tricky place um, to get to. My nearest name is about a kilometre away as well, at the end of that lane. Um, so quite remote. And this guy, by the way, is my dog Moss, who you can see in the background attempting to wrestle some um, branches out of the, of the hedgerows there. He loves it here. It's his, you know, it's paradise for a dog, especially a Border Collie. So it's now late May 2018. And it's been so beautiful here this past few weeks. Um, this meadow to my left is just in wildest bloom. Everything is in flower. Um, that it's kind of inspired me to finally get this video blog started. Um, it's been a long time coming, but um, it's not always rainy here. And I, I really want to showcase how breathtaking this, this part of the world can be. So in this first video, I just want to talk kind of briefly about what my goals are in moving here, what my, my plan is, and the things that really matter to me in life. Um, it's not the sort of place that the average person lives. Um, you can't just pop to the shops or the post office. It's, it's pretty remote, and it's a tough life. I mean, there's no, um, there's no water connection to the cottage. Um, I have to fetch water by hand. It's, it's uh, a, a real challenge. So I think it's fair to say that from a very young age, I was very outdoorsy, very practically minded, always out romping through the fields and stealing strawberries and making dens and tree houses, all that kind of stuff. That was my life as a kid. Um, but I've kind of always aspired to live that kind of life as an adult, and it never worked out in my 20s. I, I went through the usual, you know, education, office job, career, um, and ultimately a sense of, I guess, disillusionment and dissatisfaction with life. Um, and I really began to develop a yearning in adulthood to live kind of off-grid, um, not entirely bereft of 21st century um, technology and, and, and luxuries, I guess you would say. Um, I have no desire to become uh, Amish or, you know, go, go back to that kind of life. But I want a simpler life, a simpler life that allows me to work on the land, use my hands in a practical way every single day, um, and also to be as self-sufficient as I possibly can. Um, so producing my own water, um, growing my own food, raising my own animals, um, having my own little system that's self-supporting. That's the primary goal. And that really is about happiness. It's about self-empowerment in order to be fulfilled. That's what I want from life. I don't want to work for someone else. I don't want to sit in an office um, staring at a screen, although I'm staring at a screen right now. But um, I want to be connected with nature and connected to the world in a way that's simple but empowering and fulfilling. So what does that mean in practical terms? Well, first of all, I want to restore the cottage. That's a long-term goal. It's not going to happen terribly quickly, but it will happen. Um, and I want to do it mostly myself. 
I'm not an electrician, so I'm not going to start messing with the wires. But aside from that, I reckon I can do just about everything myself. Um, and using traditional techniques and materials like lime render and uh, reinstating the stonework, um, using traditional insulation methods like sheep's wool and hemp, um, doing the carpentry myself, making it as simplistic and rustic and traditional as I can, as it would have been when it was first made, um, and doing as much of that work myself, slowly, steadily by hand as I can. So my second major goal in moving here is to grow as much food as I possibly can and be food neutral, which basically means um, you grow as much as you can and the stuff you can't self-produce, you sell your excess um, either at, in a stall at the end of the lane or at um, markets um, on a Saturday afternoon and you use that small amount of revenue to pay for the things that you can't grow, like tea bags, sugar, porridge oats, things like that, that I eat every day, but are just impractical to produce myself, or impossible. A lot of foods um, can be grown here. It's a really great climate. Um, it's not particularly hot in the summer, so you can't have things like fig trees and almond trees, and you can't produce your own citrus. Um, because, you know, a really hot summer day here would be maybe 25 degrees and you need more consistent heat than that for a lot of things. But saying that, it's great for most vegetables, it's great for a lot of berries. Berries do really well here. Um, potatoes, livestock love it, so things like chickens and um, ducks because it's not stiflingly hot and there's plenty of moisture. So it's quite a good place to be self-sufficient when it comes to food production. And then I want to try and apply that same principle of being food neutral to everything as much as I can. Things like water and electricity. I've already got a couple of solar panels set up, but it's more of an experimental rig to see how it works and learn about it. Um, I want to scale that up for the entire house, so I'm producing my own power. Um, to have a wind turbine as well. Very, very windy here in Western Ireland over the winter. Um, and I want to be able to pay for the things that I can't produce myself, like an internet connection, with the, a surplus of the things I can produce. Um, and that concept of being food neutral or neutral in terms of um, self-sufficiency is my second major goal in moving here. And the third major goal, which is the only selfless goal, I guess, is um, to live as sustainably as I possibly can. Um, I, that's not why I'm here, fundamentally. I'm here because I think it will make me happier, and this is a life, a practical, hands-on life that I find, having lived here for two years, deeply fulfilling, and think I will continue to. Sorry, that's the sound of moss uh, romping through the undergrowth there, destroying a tree. So what does it mean to live sustainably? I mean, it means different things for different people. It depends if you live in a city or in, a, uh, in the country. It depends what country you live in, what part of the world. For me, living here, it means having as small a carbon footprint as I possibly can. Uh, eventually, I want, hope to get an electric car, but you know, right now I need a car to live and I don't have hardly any money. So uh, an electric car is not practical or realistic, but eventually something I aspire to. Um, but being resourceful, not wasting things, um, not buying products that have been shipped from halfway across the world and used ridiculous amounts of oil um, to get them here, not wasting fossil fuels, not using um, gas for heating or oil for heating when I could use um, electricity that I generated myself or fuel from trees that have grown locally that I've cut down and harvested. Carbon from trees is, or trees in general are carbon neutral in terms of generating heat, so um, that's a much more sustainable way to heat your home um, than using gas or oil. So I love the idea of minimizing my own footprint on the planet. That's 
really what goal three is about. Um, I can never eliminate it entirely, but I think I can negate it enough by doing positive things, by producing my own food to minimize um, the amount of oil and fossil fuels used to transport food here, by um, sourcing things as locally as I possibly can. Hello, Moss. Good boy. Um, so that's what goal three is all about, living sustainably and trying to live in harmony with nature as best I can in a modern world. So when I first moved here, um, I lived in the back of my Honda Jazz, which is a little Japanese hatchback car, which I drove over from the UK. Uh, with my entire life's possessions in the back. Um, so I unloaded all those into the cottage and I slept in the back of the car. The cottage was and still is in such a bad state that it's, um, at that time at least, was impossible really to live in. Um, and then I cleared a piece of land, cleared all nettles, hogweed, head-high grass. This was back in May of 2016. Um, in order to put some tents up, which I then moved into. So that was an upgrade, moving from the back of my Honda Jazz into some tents. I then acquired a <laughs> very um, stylish but 20-year-old two-seater Parisian sofa bed from a French guy living in Dublin who was in his 50s, I guess, and he'd brought it over as a young man um, when he moved to Ireland from France and it, it was very shabby and um, decrepit, a bit worse for wear and he was giving it away on free cycle so I drove all the way to Dublin just to get this um, this old sofa bed which I shoved in the back of my Honda Jazz and drove all the way back to my cottage and I put that into the cottage in one room it was the only piece of furniture in the entire house um, surrounded by bare stone walls and a broken flagstone floor and cobwebs and dead bugs everywhere as it was, still is. Um, and I lived and slept on that sofa bed for over a year, well over a year in fact, right through the winter with no heating. Um, so I eventually realized that in order to actually um, start working on the cottage in earnest and achieve anything there, I needed to not be sleeping in it and living in it. So I once again um, uh, turned to the internet and found a very old, shabby, run-down caravan for less than a thousand euro, um, which I managed to drive back with my uh, car, which was not a pleasant experience, but I managed to get it back here. I then spent about three or four months over the winter which again wasn't smart, um, restoring it. I had to rip one of the walls out because it had terrible damp, completely rebuild that wall, completely gut and rebuild the interior, repaint it, um, re-plumb it, um, redo all the 12 volt electrics, uh, remake all the shower and the, put, I fitted a composting toilet which I made. So that was quite a big job. Initially I didn't think it would take that long but um, the whole caravan is, has been remade, essentially, um, using the shell of the original. Um, and I've been living in that caravan now for about four or five months. I guess most people wouldn't consider living in a caravan to be an upgrade, but to me, living in that caravan now with running water, even though I have to fetch the water and fill the tank up, um, and lights that work, and a toaster, <laughs> and an actual bed that resembles a bed that you can sleep on in a normal way and doesn't creak every time you get on it. That to me is luxurious compared to what I've come from. So what I want to do now is give you a really quick tour of where I live. You can see behind me the forestry that I talked about, and you can also see one of these meadows, which my neighbor keeps for hay. Um, absolutely um, alive right now with um, 
different wildflowers and particularly wild Irish buttercup, which is the yellow flower you can see out there. So this is actually where I get my water from. Little natural spring at the um, edge of my land. Um, it used to be with buckets, but I now have um, a well pump, which I stick in there and pump the water up through a very long 100 meter host pipe. So this is year three of growing vegetables. Um, and it's my most ambitious year yet. Um, this is the new vegetable plot, which was all overgrown with weeds back in 2017. Um, so I'm not going to talk in detail about what I'm doing here, but I'll give you a quick overview of what's growing. So we've got some Swiss chard, some broccoli and spinach. We've got some salsify, beets, um, some leeks down the middle in the toilet roll, which gives you a bigger white stalk, if you were wondering what that's for. We've got a whole row of different varieties of carrots, some early, some late. We've got some kohlrabi. We've got some more carrots in the middle. We've got some swedes. And then my main carbohydrate crop, which is the potatoes. Again, four different varieties. Um, some really suited to the Irish climate, some not so, which I'm kind of experimenting with. So there'll be some um, varying degrees of success in the crop, no doubt. And you can see up in the distance there, the cottage and one of the outbuildings. Um, and my washing hanging on the line, looking great. <laughs> and here's another vegetable section. So we've got some corn, we've got some lettuce, um, sugar snap peas and snow peas at the back, runner beans, last year's kale, which I'm harvesting the florets off and frying up, it's delicious. We've got some um, Italian runner beans at the back there, which are a bit of an experiment. Rhubarb, which has done amazingly well this year, a real success. And some tomatoes, sunflowers, and again, new this year, um, some strawberry ridges. There's about 250 strawberries in total here, so it's a really ambitious strawberry growing empire. So over here, we've got some more Swiss chard and winter density lettuce. It's really good. It grows right through the winter. Um, some green Calabrese broccoli. Two different varieties of kale. We've got the Siberian kale and the scarlet kale, which doesn't do as well. The Siberian is incredible. It's, it just grows like a weed. In fact, it's seeded all over my land now from previous years. So it's, it's technically wild kale growing on my little plot. Um, some more broccoli some cabbage with some leeks down the middle, um, some Brussels sprouts, two different varieties with some carrots, and some purple sprouting broccoli with some more carrots. Now this area was originally where I had a greenhouse which I built back in 2017, but um, unfortunately we had the worst storm um, for 60 years I read um, in Ireland over the winter and it got basically blown down even though it was well made and reinforced, um, 140 kilometer an hour winds uh, smacked into it from the north side and just distorted all the metal frame. So I replaced it with some raised beds and one of them I built this little greenhouse contraption on, which I'll do on the other one eventually too, in which we have some asparagus peas and <laughs> and some tomatoes, a few different varieties, more tomatoes and peppers in here. And this is my little home. We have my renovated caravan, my solar panels. <laughs> I can't get used to this thing. And Moss's home, which is one of the first projects I actually made, in fact. There you go. He doesn't actually spend much time in it in the summer because it's far too hot. Yes, 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 boy. Too hot in there for you, isn't it? But in winter, he, um, he loves it in there. It keeps him nice and warm. He's actually insulated. These walls are about five inches thick with um, styrofoam insulation all around. So it's a pretty luxurious kennel. In fact, it's better insulated than the caravan. <laughs> And you can just about see in the distance some of my neighbors, some uh, cows. 
which come right up to the fence here and often wake me up in the morning. And finally, I just want to take a real quick walk down my lane to show you just what I mean about where I live. So here's my gate, the edge of my land, and here is the lane that connects me with the outside world. My nearest neighbour is about a kilometre down there. And there's about two or three other houses at the end of the lane. Um, but it's not a village, you know, you have to go another um, five miles to get to the village. No traffic, no cars, only birds singing. Moss! Not a bad place to live, is it? Pretty idyllic. Especially on a summer day like this. So, <laughs> I hope this will be the first of many videos. Um, they won't all be me yapping in front of a camera, I promise you. There'll be lots of um, practical stuff too. Um, gardening techniques and how to grow certain fruits and vegetables and how to look after certain animals and um, restoration work on the cottage, um, building techniques and how to make composting toilets and I'm on my third now by the way so I'm becoming a bit of an old hand when it comes to composting toilets um, and all sorts of different subjects and things I want to talk about and share with the world as much as I can. They're not necessarily going to be the most um, educational, as I'm. Some things I have some experience in, but I'm I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be, but I would think that sharing the journey with me might be informative, and at the very least, it'll be entertaining, especially with this guy to keep me company. <laughs> the next video, however, is I'm afraid going to be a bit more yapping, because I really want to talk about um, why I'm here. This video has, has kind of covered um, what my goals are and what my ambitions are for living here and what I want to achieve. But um, the bigger question really has to be why I gave up a pretty normal Western life to buy a crumbling ruin in the middle of nowhere um, and really distance myself from, um, not intentionally, but from friends and family and people that I know for the sake of this life and this dream. Um, why would I do that? What's it all about? What motivated me? Where's that desire come from? Um, that's what the next video is going to be about. And I'm really, really excited to share that because I think there's a lot of people out there who have the same feelings and the same disillusionment with um, life that I had uh, and the same dream of, of living like this. Um, they may be at, not at that point yet in their lives, they may never reach it, but um, perhaps just hearing someone else talk about what motivated them to make this move might be inspirational. Um, it might even be the catalyst for change for other people, and that is hugely exciting for me. For the moment though, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. Um, I hope to see you again real soon. Um, and from me and from this guy, <laughs> Bye for now.